Hey, welcome to my channel. If you think the thumbnail or the title was provocative or negative, well, that was not what it I meant it to be. This is a genuine conversation based on facts and physics as far as my understanding goes. Let's start the conversation with F8. Why F8? Because most lenses will have its highest performance happening at f8 around f8 between f8 and f11 but most often it's actually between f6 5.6 to f8 f10 now this is where you get uh, quite a bit decent wide depth of field so lots more of the images actually in focus depending on the focal length you're using and their distance to the subject and at the same time this is also the aperture where you get the sharpest image out of a lens or most lenses this is where you see the minimum amount of lack of corner sharpness um vignetting you name it uh, uh, you know uh, chromatic aberration longitudinal chromatic aberration all those things you basically get the best image out of a lens in most situations in most for ma most manufacturers it happens at f8 in many types of commercial work you are not actually looking for bokeh you want the subject to be completely in focus for example automobile or large product shoots any most product shoots except for i think food you want the entire image to be absolutely in focus you want the best rendition of um, the image in terms of corner to corner sharpness, corner to corners, you don't want vignetting. You'll most often find yourself stopping down to F8. And then you may want to actually crop the image because uh, you shot a bit wide or for whatever reasons, you may just want to crop the image. So you want a bit of resolution. You want a decent amount of resolution, right? So this resolution of the sensor and the ability of the camera to reproduce the perfect image is what we are talking about here they go in combination they go hand in hand the lens has to be able to give the sensor the accurate data that it sees and pass that accurate data through to the sensor without distortion and the sensor should be good enough to receive all the data and retain the information you actually start hitting the limitation, the resolution limitation of a full frame sensor just around about 45 to 46, 47, 48 uh, megapixels. Let me show you. This is a diffraction limit calculator. Okay. Now, what's diffraction? Diffraction is nothing but how the light bends when it is forced to go through a tiny hole. So as your aperture value increases, if it goes from 1.2 to f2 to f4.5 to 5.6 to 11, you basically the hole in the camera, the aperture closes down and you have a tiny hole. And if the light, light has to go through that hole, tiny pinhole, then the light kind of bends. And as the light bends, it gets distorted. You don't see the distortion. Okay, look, light bends when it goes through any hole of any size it's just that smaller the hole becomes it starts getting distorted more and more and that distortion starts becoming visible on sensors of different sizes and of sensors of different megapixels and look at the values here okay uh, let's say we say 61 megapixels that's what you get with the sony r series of cameras right you get that with the sony a7r5 a7r4 a7cr they all have 61 megapixels sensor now um so that's 61 megapixels sensor now so this is a full frame camera and we're looking at whether diffraction impacts at f8 or not and if you calculate you will say that diffraction hits diffraction is the image is going to be diffraction limited as in the lens no lens no full frame lens at f8 can resolve for 61 megapixels at a pixel at 100 percent crop ratio if you look at this calculator this is a slightly different calculator let's go to let's go to sony yeah let's go to 
Sony A9. Okay, let's go to 61 megapixels, F8, and yes, it's diffraction limited because diffraction starts becoming visible at 7.1, right? 7.1, and it starts to show, it starts to get impacted by diffraction. So you're not going to get 61 megapixels worth of image from that sensor, even if you are using a 61 megapixel sensor. If you're new here, or if you're coming back for the second or third time, help me reach 6,000 subscribers now, 6,000 subscribers by the end of March. I know it's difficult. Oh, I know, I know it's difficult. I know you're not going to probably subscribe and just ignore this appeal, but if you can not feel lazy, just click on the subscribe button and help me reach 6,000 subscribers by the end of March. I have about 40 days to go for now, go for that. I think I'm going to mix the, miss the mark of reaching 5,000 subscribers by the end of February, but uh, I'd like to reach 6,000 by, by March. That's not too much to ask, I think. Now let's get back to the video. What happens at 50 megapixels? Again, yes, it's it does impact diffraction. Diffraction begins uh, to become visible at F8. At F8, diffraction is hitting your sensor, which means you're not going to get the full resolution out of the sensor. Let's see, let's come down 49. And I'll explain diffraction later in the video, actually. It impacts your image. Yeah, so again, F8 at 49 megapixel doesn't work. What about 70? Okay, no. If you have a 40, 47 megapixels full frame camera, um, diffraction hits you at f9, right? Nikon has a 45 point, uh, Nikon typically uses a 45.3 or 5 megapixel sensor, let's say, right? So, yeah, you're good to uh, go till f9, you're good to go down till f9. So, remember, if you have a 45 megapixel Z8 or Z9, you're good till f9. And after F9 at F10 at F11, you will start losing resolution. So when you zoom in at 100% crop, you're not going to see as much resolution. And that is the reason why I don't think Nikon is going to make a full frame camera with 61 megapixels sensor or anything beyond 45 megapixel sensor. You're not going to see uh, distorted light at a 24 megapixel camera. Let's see 24. Okay. If you have a 24 megapixel full frame camera till F11, you're fine. No problem. Uh, your camera is going to not be able to detect if the light is distorted. If you use a 16 megapixel full frame camera at F8, you can go down to F14 because you know, you're, you're good to go. I mean, you're not going to be able to see the distortion and the distortion basically reduces the sharpness of the image, right? It takes away information from the light because the light is now bent. It's not, it doesn't have th that amount of fidelity. And therefore, when it is hitting the sensor, it's not carrying all the information that's that was there in the image there out there on the subject. So there is a limitation to what resolution the camera sensor can have and what uh, how much the lens can resolve if you adjust for the depth of field and the f number look if you're um, you know if you are using 61 megapixel sensor and if you uh, only shoot at 5.6 you're fine uh, even if you shoot at 6.3 you're fine so for example for sony the 200 to 600 6.3 is fine so but it has to be sharp at 6.3 because starting 7.1 you'll start losing resolution on your sensor so if your lens does not resolve for 61 megapixels worth of image i mean that's a lot of pressure on the lens to perform wide open for a uh, affordable lens like the 200 to 600 it has to do its best to re resolve for all 61 megapixels um, of detail and if it does if it fails to do that 
you have no use of the 200 to 600 or you have limited use you're not going to get a 61 megapixel worth of image you're going to get probably a 40 megapixel image you don't know i mean you need to understand whether the lens needs stopping down uh, in order to perform at its best at, and if the lens needs stopping down in order to perform at the best then the moment you stop down i mean you know let's see we're at 7.1 you can only resolve let's say yeah you can only resolve 59 megapixels so that's the game it's a sort of a big give and take between how much the camera can resolve through its sensor and how much the lens can resolve stopping down to a certain point and i think f8 is a good benchmark because f8 is usable uh, is used in many situations especially in studio portraits in studio situations not only just portraits for any type of studio shooting f8 is very frequently used yes people do use f4 5.6 but f8 is just that safe f number to use when you want everything in uh, focus and you want the image to be perfect so if your sensor doesn't perform to its full potential at f8 you're just paying money for nothing which i think is the reason nikon may actually never launch a full frame camera with anything more than 40 megapixels and if it does i expect nikon to actually send us a notice saying that don't shoot below f6.3 or f7.1 if it's a 61 megapixel camera for example so that's just my um, understanding of nikon's philosophy nikon's approach to making cameras and making lenses because i think nikon is looking at that beautiful balance look if you want more than 46 47 megapixels you have to go to full frame you probably have to go and look for the gfx so if you see uh, if you look at gfx for example okay let's go to 70 gfx series has 100 megapixel cameras right so does it resolve for does it resolve 100 megapixels no i mean you start showing um diffraction at 7.1 right so what about 75 yeah uh, 75 megapixels f8 fine on a medium format fujifilm gfx camera so clearly the gfx's do not resolve for 100 megapixels f8 f at f8 and understand f8 on a gfx camera is going to not give you as deep a depth of field so you're already compromising all right so which means that <laughs> if you want deeper depth of field if you want deeper depth of field you probably need to go down to f11 and at f11 gfx let's see how much can that sensor resolve not even 50 megapixels not even 50 megapixels so let's say f10 f10 50 megapixels so the gfx 50 is uh, again if you want deeper color depth 16 bit color you can go for the gfx 50 megapixel cameras and you can shoot at f10 and about just about resolve a 49 to uh, you know 48 megapixel sensor so there you go now you have an understanding so there is a physical limitation to how much a lens can resolve especially when you want deeper depth of field you want everything in focus you want no lens distortion to be carried through to the sensor i think the, the between 46 between 45 uh, to 48 is the limitation i mean honestly this is crazy because you know if you want the EQ, f8 equivalent look on a gfx camera you need to stop down further and the moment you stop down further you are not resolving anything more than 48 megapixels beyond f10 you're not which means why would you pay that much more money for a fujifilm system 
if you cannot have deeper depth of field then f10 at 50 megapixels even why would you spend all that extra money uh, all that carry all that extra weight and endure the slower processing speed of those cameras and if you're okay with f8 on a gfx you can go as much uh, as and that is f8 on a medium format i mean fuji medium format gfx camera you can you can get 75 megapixels you can get 70 no you cannot you cannot get you can get 75 megapixels you don't get the full 100 megapixels on a fuji gfx camera at f8 sadly sadly okay you have to come down to let's say 7.1 no not even that 6.7 you have to come down to 6.7 which is not a lot of depth of field in most situations because i mean especially on a gfx camera it's probably going to be like a 4.5 which is going to have going to have a lot of stuff in the foreground and the background not in focus I'm going to leave the conversation here. If you find it enlightening, interesting, let me know. Subscribe to the channel. I'm going to see you soon with another one.